Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to the Win911 instructional video series. Today I'll be discussing the configuration of basic tactics and basic strategies. This feature is available on any of our Win911 licenses. However, inside of our software, to find your license, you can go to the System and Information tab. As you can see here, I'm on the Interactive License. A prerequisite to this video, you should be familiar with how to configure your contacts, your schedules, and roles. There's an additional how-to instructional video for you to go back and watch if you're not familiar with those items. What are tactics and strategies? In the new software, it's the means of configuring your call-out escalation plan. A tactic is your call-out list of people sequentially down the line of email contact this person, call this person, and a strategy is a policy of actions to put in place for your starting, stopping, and re-notifying of users. We also offer advanced tactics and strategies, which requires the advanced license of our software. There's a separate how-to instructional video for configuring the advanced tactics and strategies. What do I need to get started? First of all, you should know exactly what alarms are of interest. For example, you might be interested in monitoring all the alarms in the east tank. You also need to know who to notify. Could it be your tech, your engineer, your manager, or your on-call person? When are these people available to receive these alarms? You might have a day shift, a weekend shift, or an afternoon shift. Next, how do you choose to notify these users? With Win911, we offer the email, SMS, voice, mobile app for notification. Finally, using all the information above, you can define your escalation path. For example, what happens if you email the technician and there's no response? Do you try them again with an email or do you call up the engineer? Let's take a look at our workflow delivering these alarms to the end user. First of all, the alarm comes in. That's the what you choose to notify on. This triggers off a strategy. These strategies are policies of actions to put in place. This will define your starting, stopping, and re-notify policies for the user. This strategy is a pointer and will point to your tactic. Your tactic is a new terminology for Win911, which is a call-out list of people. Using those questions I previously asked, let's take a look at a configuration I'll be using for the rest of this video. The first item we, def we define, we said the tags or blocks we'd like to notify on. Next, we define a notification path. So our technician, his name is Frank, and we'll wait 10 minutes to see if the alarm clears before we start this call out list to Frank. How do we choose to notify Frank? We're going to use email. If he doesn't respond or acknowledge this alarm after 20 minutes, then we will escalate this over to our engineer Brian and we'll use an email as well. So step one, we'll configure what's called our tactic. This is that call out list. So the tactic will be named technicians. We'll wait 10 minutes before we're starting this to allow to see if the alarm clears. Next, we'll email Frank. We'll delay 20 minutes, and then we can email Brian. We'll go through this loop five times of this email process. With a tactic, we also have to define a strategy. That strategy is the pointer. This strategy will point to the technician's tactic. You can name these tactics and strategies whichever you choose. I personally like to name them the same item, technicians and technicians, because then I use this as a pointer so I can see end-to-end -end configuration. We have here the name technicians, we'll start the tactic name technicians. So this strategy will point to this call out list we will define. Inside the strategy, we'll have the stop condition for the call out when the alarm is acknowledged. If any state changes occur, for example, the alarm goes active to inactive or the alarm becomes acknowledged, on this example, we chose not to configure re-notification. The next item in the gray, will have a group or some alarms we choose to notify on. These alarms as they come in, we chose to notify our engineers. Our engineer is named Brian, and instead of delaying like as we did previously, this time we can start the call out immediately. For Brian, we'll notify him using our mobile 911 app. After 10 minutes, if he does not respond or acknowledge this alarm, then we can escalate the issue. So the next person we'll escalate it to is we'll escalate it to Brian's phone. If there's still no response, we can escalate it to the manager, Jill, using a phone call. Now, to configure our tactic, we'll name this tactic Engineers. 
as pointed out over here, we're not going to do any delay. The first notification will be Brian using the mobile app. We will wait 10 minutes. The next item we will do, we'll call Brian. We will wait 10 minutes, and then we will call Jill, the manager. So this is an example of our escalation path. We can repeat this loop 10 times. Our strategy name is engineers, so engineer, engineer. We'll name these the same in this example. We'll start the tactic name engineer, all these items. The stop condition will be if the alarm is acknowledged. And since we're using our mobile app, we'll choose to use a re-notify on any state change. For example, with mobile, if the alarm goes from active to acknowledge, in our mobile app, we'll see a checkbox that allows the user to know that alarm was acknowledged. The re-notify on state change is a nice feature that we have. But if people receive too many emails because alarm is acknowledged, they receive another email, you can turn this feature on and off to stop those users from receiving those second acknowledgement emails. Next, I'll be going over to my demo but I'd like to make you aware that I have all my email, my phone, and my mobile contacts were already created prior to this demo. Okay, here we are inside of Win911. We're on the Notification Tactics Basics tab. We can click the Create New. Now, using this green shot I had you take earlier, we'll configure everything under that solution one for the tactic for the technicians. So this item will be named technicians. You can add a description if you choose. And we said we would repeat this loop five times. Next, we can add our callout. The first item in our callout is to email our technician Frank. After we email Frank, we chose to delay 20 minutes. If after 20 minutes nothing happens, let's email Brian. As you can see, I have all my contacts set up here. Let's select Brian's email. Let's recap. Our tactic was named Technicians, and as this tactic becomes active, we'll wait 10 minutes before going down the callout. The first person we'll notify is Frank for email. If he doesn't respond for 20 minutes to acknowledge this alarm, we'll go ahead and we'll escalate this to Brian. We'll email Brian, our engineer. Now we chose to repeat this loop five times. So we'll email Frank, wait 20 minutes, email Brian, go back, repeat this five times. Let's save this. Now let's create our second tactic for our engineers. You have the ability to copy this, make an exact copy to edit, or we can create new. I'll choose to create a new. We have is for our engineers. That's that second line item. So engineers. Now in this callout, we decide we want to start the tactic or callout immediately. And we chose to repeat this loop 10 times. Let's define our escalation path. The first person we chose to notify is Brian with the mobile app. The next person we chose to notify is Brian with a voice call. Finally, we chose to notify our manager. We also had some delays to configure here. We decided to wait 10 minutes, wait 10 minutes again, and escalate the issue. As this tactic becomes active, name engineers, we'll immediately start this call out. We'll notify Brian, we'll wait 10 minutes, call Brian, wait 10 minutes, and then call Jill, the manager. We can repeat this loop 10 times. You'll also notice we have a feature here called retries. That's for if you try to make a call, for example, and the connection doesn't happen. We, how many times do you choose to retry? That would be configured here. So let's save this tactic. Now we have our engineer and our technician's tactic created. Let's create those strategies or policies to put in place. On the strategies tab, click the plus. The first one is called technicians. Here on the technician's strategy, in the top right-hand corner of that screenshot I gave you, 
we choose to start the tactic named Technicians. This is a call out for emailing Frank and emailing Brian. Now we also chose to re-notify on any state change. We said no. So if the alarm goes from active to inactive, we're not going to re-notify these people. There it is. Your strategy named technicians will point to a tactic or a callout list named technicians. And we chose not to re-notify on any state change. As you can see here, there's also the advanced mode. This is available only on the advanced license. Let's save. Let's create another strategy for the engineers. In this strategy, we chose to notify the engineers tactic. That's that call list for Brian with the mobile, Brian with the call, and then eventually going up to Jill, the manager. On this strategy, we chose to re-notify on any state change. For example, with the mobile app, you could have a state change that shows a checkbox that goes to the mobile app if the alarm has been acknowledged. So that's a nice feature to have if you're using the mobile app. This is really up to the end user as to how they would choose to re-notify on the state change of any alarms. Let's save this strategy. Okay, let's recap. Starting on the right side, we, we created two tactics or callout lists. The first tactic was for the technicians. We, we chose to email the technician Frank and then escalate this up to Brian if he was not responding. The second tactic we have is for the engineers. In this tactic, we chose to notify Brian with the mobile app, call Brian the engineer, and then escalate it to Jill the manager. These tactics were pointed to by our strategy, or here's where we define the starting, stopping, and re-notifying policies. If we recall, for the technicians, we chose not to re-notify on a state change. For the engineers, we, took, we chose yes to re-notify on state changes. So these strategies point to a tactic. The final step in the process is configuring your alarms inside of Win911. We have our call out list of people and these policies or strategies put in place. Now we need to bring our alarms over into Win911. To do this, we have our how to instructional video, which covers our six SCADA types and our OPC. Please reference your specific SCADA type to see how you can bring your alarms over into Win911. These are short 10 minute videos that will teach you how to filter your alarms in. So these alarms will eventually trigger your strategy, which triggers your tactic. That's all for configuring your basic tactics and basic strategies. Thank you for watching.